Hello everyone, my name is Raj and I go by the DJ moniker Deepnotic. Uh, today um, I'm going to be talking about how to organize your crates uh, within Serato. Um, this might be something that you might have been wondering how to do and um, I, I got along to uh, organizing my crates and by using the Serato Smart Crates feature I was able to quickly and very effectively uh, build my collection um, without, uh, with, with, with details that basically would help me during my sets. Uh, so why would you want to organize your crates? So one of the things is, as a DJ, you will have tons and tons of music, uh, trying to wade through all of that, trying to find the right, right track at the right moment, especially for... Uh, to match the energy of the, the crowd becomes uh, becomes a challenge. Uh, so organizing your crates uh, helps you pick that right track very quickly. And um, at the same time, um, as part of that organizational uh, uh, step, you add in details that help you uh, with identifying the main components uh, of the track uh, through some of the descriptions that you include into uh, into the track information itself. So before you get started, um, one of the things I would say is that you would want to spend some time uh, preparing your tracks really. And what that really means is by adding in any missing information that might be there, uh, that might not be there actually. So for example, what you see right here is um, on in, in my Serato collection under my audio sets, uh, I have various songs um, and columns that basically describe the songs, and then in the end, I've included the, the genre uh, column. Now, a lot of these, uh, if you are like me, uh, if you download your songs uh, and tracks from services like Beatport or uh, uh, from record pools like ZDJ, uh, you'll have a lot of this information pre-filled. However, one of the things that you might want to do is uh, add in some information in addition to what has been provided previously. So, for example, let me load this track and let's talk through this. Right, so I'm going to, so the, the genre already says it's a Deep House track and I'm going to play this for you so you get a sense of what it sounds like. Um, as you're playing through this, one of the things that you might want to do is kind of like quickly jump around to get a sense of what the overall track uh, sounds like. So you, this is the way uh, you would do it. So you start off playing like this. Try to see if, which other components are present. See if there are any vocals anywhere in between. You have a bit of vocals out there. And one of the things that you really want to do is identify the energy of the track. Like, how does that actually, how does the energy actually, um, you know, feel? Uh, so I'm going to pause this track right here. And one of the things that I do is the Deep House classification uh, for the genre is pretty accurate. But what I'll do here is now I'll say, you know, I'll add in under genre as vocal. And then I'll add in something called uh, the energy component. So this is something that I've come up with, which just says it's a high energy track. Um, so you might want to do low energy, mid energy, and high energy. Uh, so by looking at this particular description for this track, uh, you now know that uh, it is, you know, you have the, the BPM, you have the key, uh, you, you know, you have the genre, the main genre in here. And then, you know, some additional stuff that actually describes a little bit about the track. So, vocals in here, and then the energy level, which is, which is high. Great. So, at this point, what do, you, what do you do with this? So, really, the whole point of explaining uh, this aspect is to kind of, like, you know, dovetail into uh, my method of organizing my crates. Um, and so, what I tend to do is I use the genre heavily to uh, organize my crates into different genres and uh, different groups that are basically genre-based. Um, the energy aspects of it are is something that I might actually use during the actual live set itself, 
to match the to match you know the energy of uh, the track that I'm mixing out of, right? So uh, so without further ado, uh, let's let's uh, move on to um, you know move on to creating or using the the smart crates uh, functionality uh, feature that's there in Serato, right? So I'm going to eject this track. All right, so I've already created a bunch of smart crates here, which classify, you know, classify uh, the general uh, sounds that, and tracks that I tend to play here. Um, so I'll show you, uh, instead of like showing you, let me just like create a new one altogether, uh, step you through that, uh, which might actually help. So one of the things, one of the, uh, one of the genres that's missing in here is basically maybe um, is is really down tempo or ambient, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the smart crate functionality, and what the way in which smart crates really works is based on rules. It's almost like a filter rule, right? So what you would do is you would click on add rule, click on the first drop down. Um, I would pick genre. It says contains, and I'm going to say down tempo, right? And you want to leave the live updates checked off. Um, and we'll come back to this particular um, uh, option for matching all of the following rules in a separate example that um, I'll show you how that can be used. And then you save it, right? So now a new crate has been created uh, out here, and suddenly you have a lot of uh, all the down tempo tracks that I had uh, that were marked as down tempo uh, all, all automatically collected in here. So I'm going to like, I'll go back in here and um, and uh, rename it down tempo. Now I haven't figured out a way to actually sort this um, alphabetically uh, and so I have to drag and drop this. So um, I'm doing that right here. So now you have like a bunch of tracks that are uh, that are down tempo that are automatically classified, right? Uh, one of the things that you'll notice in here is that um, there's like when you download from um, you know uh, track download services like Beatport or uh, the D the DJ pools, you might actually get some additional um, some additional uh, genres in here uh, in addition to what you are actually trying to um, to classify it as, and that's fine. It's actually pretty smart that way. Uh, however, in this case, like for example, like I have this track that. I've classified as being down tempo. I've said that it's got, you know, it's got a breaks uh, structure, uh, breakbeat structure. Uh, it's got vocals. It's actually Hindi, and then it's uh, the Hindi language, and then it's a mid-energy track. So what do I do with this? So one of the things I can do is I can actually, I can have the same track um, grouped into various smart crates under these various components. So or these various conditions. So I, don't have, I already have that under down tempo. I should find this under breaks already. Um, so let me see if I can find that track in here. Here we go. It's under breaks. Uh, so basically it's filtering by breaks. Um, it'll be under vocal. So let's see. There you go. Local, and now I don't necessarily uh, I don't have any crates that are broken up by specific languages. I think just like you know having knowing what language that is, uh, like for example, this this part of track track is like a Latin track, so I know it's got local Latin uh, Latin vocals in it. Uh, so that works for me. I mean, you guys can do uh, you know you can you can add in rules as you require. Now, one of the things I was going to talk about are the multiple rules themselves. So I'm going to go in here. This is a good example um, of, of rules. Uh, and let me see. Let me make sure. Now, this, this was not the one. Let me see which one it was. Uh, I think it was techno. Uh, oh, here we go. Perfect. So. I had some tracks that basically had genres that said techno, dub techno, uh, dub without a space techno. Uh, and so really, you know, the, the rules were actually filtering in additional like dub techno uh, genres that I wasn't really interested in, at least not for the techno classification. 
So my initial rule that I set up was the genre contains techno. This was checked off, match all of the following rules. And then the second rule that I applied was the genre does not contain dub space techno and genre does not contain dub techno, no spaces here. And so when I added these rules and I saved them, they automatically excluded anything that might have had uh, techno, uh, sorry, uh, dub techno in there, right? And so this is how you would actually uh, use your rules to uh, further refine your uh, groupings, uh, so to speak. So one of the things that I wanted to um, caution you all about is that if you were creating smart crates um, on your on your laptop, they if you're like me, uh, my uh, I tend to store my uh, my content, my playlists on a portable drive, so I can you know uh, they're it's, it's separate from the laptop, so that if the laptop goes down, I don't you know I can always switch to another one. I still have my portable drive there. Um, however, the the thing with smart crates though is is that the um, is that they are actually the smart crates actually uh, land up. Uh, only being stored locally in on the on the disk on the on the on the PC. So even though you know you might have, you know, even though you might have, um, you know, your uh, even though you might have your uh, uh, your uh, Serato structure uh, and and backup structures and your music on a portable drive. Uh, this folder is is missing. The reason why you see this out here is because I've actually copied. Um, the the uh, the folder off the PC onto this particular portable drive. So what you would have to do is you'd have to go to uh, your local instance of uh, where Serato's uh, uh, directory structure is. Go into Serato, locate your Smart Crate folder, and you'll notice that on your uh, portable drive the Smart Crate folder is is missing. So you could simply copy this over to your portable drive. And then, um, just to be sure, and if you had to like move to a separate computer, what you would simply do is you would copy the uh, the contents of this crate, the smart crates, onto the local drive on that other uh, on the other computer. So that's really it. Um, there's not much to this, but I hope this helps you. It is um, it has helped me a lot. Um, I can quickly navigate through my entire collection uh, without actually uh, trying to think of, you know, where is what. Um, and once this becomes a habit, you know, all you have to do is simply, uh, so there's two benefits of, uh, of, of the uh, preparation or the uh, organizational um, effort into this, which is uh, it forces you to listen to all the tracks, which is really a good thing. Um, it helps you add in additional uh, tags that basically help you understand, you know, what sort of of the song uh, track it is, uh, and really in my case, I've had I have all this old, uh, all of these old tracks uh, that I am now revisiting and I'm actually enjoying, um, and um, I'm looking forward to actually using them in my set. So uh, I hope this was helpful to you and uh, uh, to you all. And if you did, definitely um, you know definitely hit that like. Uh, if you feel like subscribing, that's great. I do put out uh, occasional uh, sets. Uh, I, when I play out, um, I might you know I do actually have um, I do go live, uh, not directly on YouTube um, or Facebook live, but really on Mixcloud, where you know you don't have those uh, copyright issues uh, with um, with the tracks. Uh, so hopefully, um, I'll get to see some of you there. All right, well, uh, thanks for listening, and uh, leave your comments below. Talk soon.